Hi there. On this topic or in this discussion, our focus will be the disturbances of your external and middle ear. Now, let's talk about your conductive hearing loss. Remember that there are two kinds of hearing loss, so conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. Now, when I talk about hearing loss, this is an interruption of the sound conduction from the outer ear to the sensory receptors in the cochlea. Now, since we're talking about your conductive hearing loss, the problems in conductive hearing loss are found in your external ear and your middle ear. The first cause here is your impacted cerumen. So in your impacted cerumen, remember that the problem is the accumulation of your earwax. This accumulation of your earwax would lead to drying up and later on would become impacted. This impaction can include can occlude, I mean, the external auditory canal that would later on cause your conductive hearing loss. In other words, the sound could not travel properly from your pina or your auricle going towards your tympanic membrane because of the presence of this occlusion. Second, you have your tympanic membrane damage. So recall that your tympanic membrane is also referred to as your eardrum. Class, it is referred to as an eardrum because it attempts to amplify the sound. Okay, by the time that the sound would hit the tympanic membrane, you would expect it to transmit to the ossicles, your malleus incus, and your staves. However, if you have tympanic membrane damage, this sound transmission would be impaired. Now, what happens? Okay, your tympanic membrane may be damaged because of injury or surgery. So, because of either injury or surgery, there may be extensive scarring of the membrane. Okay, if the tympanic membrane class will be scarred, you expect it to be sclerosed. You expect its function to be decreased, hence leading also to your conductive hearing loss. Next, you have your middle ear infection. Particularly, you have your otitis media, your serous otitis, okay, and then your effusion. So when I talk about your middle ear infection, this leads to accumulation of fluids. These fluids may be past. These fluids may just be simply fluids, such as in your serous otitis media. However, this fluid would still interfere with sound transmission. Okay, so for that reason, it could also lead to conductive hearing loss. Then you have your autosclerosis. So remember your ossicles, your ossicles, malleus, incus, and staves. When I talk about autosclerosis class, there is hardening of the bone. Okay, these bones are hardened. This could be genetic disorder or specifically, the staves could have an effect okay, on the sound transmission of the inner ear which later on would cause conductive hearing loss. So basically what happens in your autosclerosis is that there is hardening of your bones. Plus the tendency when they are hardened, they are also attached to one another. Instead, instead of your malleus incus and staves transmitting vibrations from one bone to another, the tendency class is that it will not be able to move. So for that reason, it will not be able to transmit the signal going towards your inner ear. Hence your conductive hearing loss also. We will be discussing sensory neural loss when we are on the inner ear. Okay, so let's talk about the specific changes or specific problems on your external and your middle ear. So class, when I talk about your external ear and canal trauma, this could be caused by your infection. This could be caused by direct damage. This could be caused by rapid changes in the middle ear cavity pressure. Okay, so class infection, it could be your otitis. Direct damage, it could be even class the instrumentation towards your ear. Okay, example, those instrumentation that are done class in the barber shops and those that are using the cotton pads going towards your middle ear. Then the rapid changes in the middle ear cavity pressure such as the taking off on an airplane, the unpressurized cabin, or going underwater without any protective equipment. So this could all lead to external trauma and canal trauma. What happens, class? So when foreign objects would be entering our ear, the tendency is that it will put pressure towards our tympanic membrane. This pressure could possibly cause perforation. Okay, when blunt injury class will occur, fractures may occur. And these fractures class may lead to middle ear damage. So recall that your middle ear is already embedded on the part of your mastoid bone. Now, excessive, okay, and even your temporal bone, I mean, class. So you have your excessive nose blowing, and rapid changes on the pressure this could increase the pressure within the middle ear without class d balancing on the pressure in the middle ear it may result to the rupture of your tympanic membrane now let's talk about the first disease which is your cerumen impaction or your impacted cerumen 
So in the background is an example of an impacted cerumen. So class, these are actually severe cases already in which which was not managed initially. Okay, so imagine this is how your impacted cerumen would look like if not managed promptly. So class, impacted cerumen. Okay, by the way, I will be using diagrams like this on the succeeding topics. So class, the purple lines here would indicate that this is part of the disease process. The red lines class here, the red broken lines are part of the signs and symptoms of the patient. And then the blue broken lines are the management which are given for our patients. Class, the problem in impacted cerumen, cerumen accumulation. That's it. That accumulation of cerumen may be brought about by physical abnormality. It may also be brought about by instrumentation or uh, gradual pressure placed on the uh, eardrums or the ear canal, I mean. That's why the recommendation when you're using your cotton buds is supposedly you should be cleaning only the outside surfaces of your ear. If you are doing it in your ear canal, the tendency is that you will be pushing the cerumen on the external part of the canal going towards inwards. And this continuous push class would lead to your impacted cerumen. That's why the recommendation is for you to clean only your ears once a day and preferably after you take a bath wherein there is still moisture that could possibly help on moving out those dirt there that could be found on your external ear. Now, what are the signs and symptoms for your patient with impacted cerumen? Oftentimes, class, your patient will complain that there is something inside their ear. If this is a baby or a child that you're dealing with, their tendency is that they become irritated because of otalgia. Okay, another term for fullness of the pain in the ear is otalgia. They would have class hearing loss if this will continue. Okay, take note that if the reason of your hearing loss is usually on the external canal, once class the reason or the etiology for the hearing loss is removed, the hearing is right away restored. Now, there are a lot of patients who have, because of this irritation that they will have on the outer ear, their tendency is to attempt to clear the outer ear with the sharp objects. This clearing of the sharp objects class could lead to trauma, infection, damage to tympanic membrane, also leading towards your conductive hearing loss. So again, conductive hearing loss in impacted cerumen is twofold. It may be because of the impaction, and then second, in an attempt to clear it, the instrumentation. Okay? Now, what is our intervention for this? We can do your irrigation, but if you're doing your irrigation, it should be using your warm water. However, class, your irrigation is contraindicated among your patients with otitis externa and perforated eardrum. Why? If your patient has otitis externa, the tendency is that the warm water class could be possibly reabsorbed or absorbed class on the surfaces of your ear. Recall that your water has a different concentration compared to the isotonic substance within our body. So, class, there's a possibility of water transfer, okay, or shifting of water, okay? Look at this. Come to look at this. If you have been taking a bath for long, the tendency, class, is that if water would enter in your ear, the tendency is that there will be several discharges after you will have your bath, okay? Class, that's because, class, some amount of water, okay, or some amount of... Um, yeah, of the wax are, re are being produced in response to the water that entered your ear. Okay, perforated eardrum. When your tympanic membrane class is perforated, recall that your tympanic membrane is your separation from your ear canal going towards your ossicles. Once class this is perforated, the tendency is that for the fluid to go from the inner or from the external auditory canal, I mean going towards your ossicles. And we don't want fluids to be there. Okay? Now, other than irrigation using your warm water, what else could be done? We could use your softeners. Class, for your softeners, you can have your warm glycerin. You could have your mineral oil. You could also have your half-strength hydrogen peroxide. Then, you also have your seruminolytic agents. For your seruminolytic agents, as the term implies, seruminolytic, okay, lytic, serumen, meaning it causes destruction of your serumen. Now, one example of this is your peroxide in glycerin, a common brand of which is your, uh, your Debrox. By the way, class, for your softeners, before I forget, okay, they are usually applied in the ear okay, for 30 minutes okay, before suctioning is done by the doctor. Okay? So, class, apply this for 30 minutes in the ear, and then suctioning may be done by the doctor. So, the purpose of that class is to soften first the cerumen for easy evacuation. Then, you have your oral gun. Oral gun class is also an eardrop. So class eardrop, it is composed of antipyrine, benzocaine, and dehydrated glycerin. Again, the components are antipyrine, benzocaine, and dehydrated glycerin. 
class these are your antipyrin benzocaine or analgesic anesthetic your glycerin as i have mentioned earlier could soften your earwax so your oral gun is a combination of your analgesic anesthetic and then earwax softener the purpose of course to easily remove your impacted serumen then you have your suctioning commonly done by our doctors and then you also have your instrumentation Plus, the use of your curette is best done by untrained expert, okay? preferably a doctor, of course. Then you have your oral suction, oral there, class A-U-R-A-L, that's the suctioning of your ear cavity. And then class that could be done under the guidance of your binocular microscope. That is to ensure that no part of the ear will be further damaged. Now, class, these are examples of your impacted serumen steel. Okay, so notice that there are hairs, hairs there. Okay, notice here that there may be um, uh, flakes or flaking class. This may be caused by your seborrheic dermatitis also, which is aggravated by the stress reactions. Okay, now let's go to your foreign body obstruction or the presence of your foreign body inside your ear. Plus, this is uh, maybe a part of a toy. Okay, this one is a bug. And then this one class a spider the first picture is less likely to happen of course owing to the size of the spider but class there are cases wherein there are spiders which are inside the uh, ear okay spiders which are inside the ear now foreign bodies so what could be the foreign bodies that could be obstructed inside the ear it could be a pea a bean pebbles toys beads insects so who do you think are the common candidates for these foreign bodies inside your ear of course the children Okay, the children, they love to put anything inside. Okay, so class, this results to pain. That's why they tend to become irritable. Oftentimes, class, the babies will be brought to the ER and then the mother will just say they have been constantly crying. So class, if your baby does not have any other reason to cry, if you've ruled out other reasons, try to consider the presence of foreign substance in the ear. Okay, that results also to hearing loss. Okay, class, now, what is our management for this? Irrigation. Irrigation class is done... Okay, using your water, however, not for foreign vegetable bodies and insects. Because class, if you will be using water to irrigate the foreign bodies of the vegetable and then the insects, the tendency is that class, it will swell. Okay, the tendency is that there will be swelling of the vegetables, there will be swelling of the bug, and then the tendency is that you will not be able to pull it out of the ear. So instead, you need to use your mineral oil. Then you have your suctioning steel and then your instrumentation. Okay, that's why, class, I would like to repeat again that instrumentation is best done by our ear doctors, okay, your ENT practitioners. Why? Class, they are referred to, by the way, as your otolaryngologist. Class, uh, if not, this could lead to accidental laceration of your skin and tympanic membrane, which would lead also, class, to the aggravation of the signs and symptoms of your patient. Okay, so this is again an example of a foreign body so in this case class bug so the common mistakes here of our patients when they are there's something inside the ear class such as the bug is that they use the cotton buds so what happens if you will be using the cotton buds the tendency is that the bug will push itself going towards the tympanic membrane and then when the bug becomes irritated class the tendency is that the bug will scratch against the tympanic membrane and you are aggravating the injury to the tympanic membrane instead of helping the patient class the best way for you to get the bug is the use of your tweezers if, if not the use of your mineral oil or if not bring to the er okay because you might not be sure whether the tympanic membrane is already perforated or not if it is perforated of course you could not even use your mineral oil Okay, so this is a bug, this is an inflamed eardrum, and here you can see the ear canal abrasions already. Okay, it's a very simple problem class to manage, but if not managed well, it may cause complications and even permanent hearing loss on the part of your patient. Next, you have your otitis externa. Class, when I talk about your otitis externa, it is characterized by inflammation of your outer ear. As the term implies, otitis externa. So what are the different causes for this? One of the most common causes is the water in the ear canal. That's the reason why, class, your otitis externa is also commonly referred to, again, as your swimmer's ear. Now, systemic conditions. There are endocrine problems and vitamin-related problems that could possibly uh, cause your ear damage, or specifically that of your external ear. For the vitamin-related problems, that would be your vitamin D deficiency. 
other than that, you also have your trauma. Other than trauma, plus you also have your dermatosis. So when I say dermatosis, this would usually involve your skin problems. So common examples for this are your psoriasis, then you have your eczema, then you have your dermatitis. Plus for your psoriasis, the usual complaint of your patient is that there will be scaling. Okay, there will be scaling because of the increase in the renewal of your the upper layer of your skin. So remember that your psoriasis is an autoimmune problem. As an autoimmune problem class, your psoriasis is characterized again by scaling. That is because the upper layer of the skin rapidly renews. Okay, your dermatitis is of course inflammatory process on your skin. Then you have one particular example which is your seborrheic dermatitis. Then you have your allergic reactions. So your allergic reactions is characterized by the presence of your, okay, uh, there is presence of your wheels and there could be presence of irritations. Okay. Now, what happens? Because of these factors combined, it may lead to the entrance of your organisms underneath the skin. Okay? So, recall that it is just a cartilage and the bone lined with skin. That's what makes up our external auditory canal. The common causes of this type of problem is your Staphylococcus aureus and then your Pseudomonas species. And then other than that, you can have your fungal cause which is your Aspergillus. Okay, so what are the signs and symptoms experienced by our patient? So your patient may have pain, moderate to severe. Discharges could be yellow, green, or foul. Okay, foul in terms of smell. Plus, it could be hair-like, black spores because of the presence of fungal infection. There could be tenderness, oral tenderness. So plus, the possibility is that when you will be touching the auricle of your patient, your patient will be complaining of pain. Because once you touch the auricle of your patient class, the inflammation may not be actually on the auricle. But once you touch the auricle, the tenderness or uh, the external auditory canal is being moved also. And because of that movement, it results to pain. This is infection. So there is fever, cellulitis, which is the inflammation of the surrounding tissues, lymphadenopathy. Okay, so recall that there are several lymph nodes here. Okay, lymph nodes are enlarged in the presence of infection. So there will be lymphadenopathy. So recalling your health assessment, you have your preauricular, you have your postauricular going towards your cervical lymph nodes. Then pruritus or itchiness. And severe cases, there will be hearing loss other than fullness in the ear. And then presence of erythema and edema. So what will we do to our patient? Since we would want to prevent first the cause, the causes, the causation of this. So for your swimmer's ear class, one way is for you your, to use your cotton ball or your lamb's wool. When you're using your cotton ball, advise us it that you should place petroleum on it so that water will not be able to enter your ear. Okay? Then, for your microorganisms, especially your bacteria, of course, you'll be using your antimicrobials, your antibacterias. And then that would be added to your steroids. Okay? No swimming for 7 to 10 days is advised. Okay? That is until class it is healed. Okay? In some cases, class, they're even advised not to swim for a month okay? to prevent the recurrence of your otitis externa. Okay? Now, if you're dealing with aspergillus species, you'll be using your antifungal. So recall that your antifungals are medications that would end with nazole. So fluconazole, ketoconazole, that may also be combined with your steroids if there is a lot of inflammation because it is your steroids which would help with the inflammatory problem of your patient. Now, another management that will be done for this patient is wicking. And it's indicated in your one hand handouts that wicking can be done. Okay, so I would like to say that class wicking is not this one. It's not placing a candle, okay, a wick of a candle on your, uh, in your ear. Okay, so when we talk about wicking in medical parlance, so class a wick is placed. So class when I say wick, it could be a cotton, it could be cloth that is placed class on the ear canal. What is the purpose? It is indicated class if your tissues are edematous. So class if your tissues are edematous, okay, a cloth, a cotton substance, or class these are actually commercially available. Okay, so a wick is placed and then topical antibiotics are applied to the wick. The purpose class is that the antibiotics will be able to penetrate until here. Okay, why? If you will not be placing the weak class, the tendency is that once the patient will be repositioned after you have applied the antibiotic or the medication, the medication will just flow out of the ear. 
So recall that if we are applying your medications, usually your patient is asked to stay on that position. Okay, applied medication here, your patient will stay on side lying position for about 15 minutes. But if you are dealing class with swelling in the middle ear, or I mean on the external auditory canal, the tendency is that this medication will not be able to flow in. Okay, that's why we use your wick to be applied on that area. Okay, so the purpose of which is to keep the canal open while the liquid medication, such as your burrow solution, can be introduced towards the ear. And it could be any eardrop for that purpose. Okay, so nursing care for this patient with otitis externa. Class, you instruct the client not to clean the external auditory canal with cotton tipped applicator. So look at this. Okay. Now, you also instruct them to avoid events that could traumatize the external ear, such as scratching the canal with the fingernail, because it would be irritating. But if they would want to be cured right away, or if they would want the condition not to progress, they must not scratch it. Okay, and then, uh, such as your swimming is also avoided. Instruct the client also to avoid getting the canal wet when doing shampooing. Okay, so nursing diagnosis for this patient could be pain. Severe cases will have altered perception, specifically your sensory perception, auditory, related to the obstruction of your external ear, high risk for injury because of auditory perception, okay, activity intolerance related to pain, body image disturbance, social isolation, related to inability to communicate. Well, so take note of this. This is their tendency. They would not communicate. Hence, what they will be doing is that they just isolate themselves. And the knowledge deficit related to treatment plan and etiologic factors. Our next topic will be on otitis media. Once again, I would like to remind you to laugh a little louder and dream a little bigger. This is the end of our discussion for your otitis externa. Thank you for your attention.